up? We're finally back again for another podcast. How you doing, guys? Me, Tom Gamer here. John, for the more acquainted people. How you doing today, guys? So I finally decided to record another episode of this podcast, so I think I'm going to try to do these every week if I can, if I got enough energy and if I got enough stuff to talk about, because this... Uh, I want to talk to you about the good news and so maybe some of the bad news. Like uh, you'll see this week, there's one item like it's a bit more uh, saddening news this week, but it doesn't matter. It's not. It's not. It's not earth shattering, but we're still. We'll, we'll still. Uh, I'll still go through it. But I just wanted to. Um, uh, what What did I want to say here? Sorry, I'm a bit babbling there. I didn't know. I never know how to start these shows. It's a bit weird. Well, let's start off. Well, welcome to episode 14 of Me Time Gamer Podcast. Hope everybody's going well. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. It's it's going it's going somewhere it's uh, it's going in the right direction so far I guess uh, eighth supper and all that yeah so um, there's not much to start at the beginning <laughs> yeah like I said it's a bit weird at the beginning so we're gonna get into what I'm playing uh, and what uh, what's in the news what caught my attention in the news of course not just any random stuff we we talk about and then we'll go with another uh, kick starting a project after that and then we'll go with the exit but before I do all that I would just want to let you know what you guys can do to Catch me everywhere. If you uh, want to follow me everywhere, of course, and then become a timekeeper. You can follow me everywhere. Me time gamer, Twitter, just Facebook and uh, Instagram, and also on YouTube, where you can see the video format of this uh, podcast. But of course, there's not. I don't record actually myself recording the podcast. It's actually just me. I add video formats of uh, some games I'm talking about, or uh, to help uh, stuff like that. But usually in the podcast, I also try to explain it. Uh, uh, audio wise so you guys get a better uh, you can uh, picture it in your head so some would say and uh, yeah so you can yeah exactly so on YouTube and hopefully you guys enjoyed the last the return the last uh, episode I really enjoyed doing it last time it was just off the cuff and it's going to be the same this week so uh, without further ado we'll start with what I am playing so if you well it's pretty easy to know what I'm playing so I'm basically just telling you what you guys can go check uh, what I produced last week on uh, me time gamer on YouTube. And last week I played a lot of more of Horizon and there's still be, there will still be a lot of more Horizon coming up. There's just that game, like I can't stop playing it. Like I, I play, there's so many, so far I think there's six episodes up. I got one in, on the, uh, on the go for, to, uh, for Thursday, I think. So you guys can check that out on Thursday. Uh, another Horizon video, but today you're getting the podcast. And, uh, yeah, so also I've been playing, I played the Disc Jam, which is, uh, if you haven't seen that video, of course, definitely go check that out. That was a fun little game to play. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of people on the servers right now, because I didn't, I wasn't able to get a lot of game going on, but that uh, eh, wasn't too bad anyway. It was still fun to play. Uh, played against, uh, 1v1. I only tried it for about a good hour or so. And I had a lot of fun time, and it's a game you can play, uh, if I remember, you can play, uh, locally, you can, uh, land, and you can, of course, play multiplayer online and all that stuff. But like I said, the servers didn't seem to be much. It's a free game for PS Plus. And uh, you should definitely check it out if you have PS Plus. I think it's still available right now or it just got available. Yeah, it just got available for March. And also this week I played, what the hell? Uh, yeah, uh, yesterday I released, a, well, actually today while I'm recording this, you guys saw the uh, the video for Big City Soar Stories, which is actually a fun game. I enjoyed it until you got to that point where I, I knew that's the point I was going to get with that game, is where you need to start paying to do stuff in the game, which is kind of sad because the game is fun. Uh, it's surprising because there's actually driving in the game, and actually, while looking, there's actually mini games where you can actually play zombie mode where you have to run over zombies with the car which is it looks pretty fucking ridiculous actually uh, i didn't get a chance because i had to do so many more missions but to do missions i have to uh, i had to buy workers to get buildings constructed and i was like oh fuck it i am i don't have time or money to spend on this so i'm not gonna pl- i'm not gonna play any further of that but it was still fun to play though i still had a fun time the mission seemed interesting the construct seemed interesting it's just at a certain point it seemed like it was more concentrating on being more of a um just a free to play, pay to win kind of game, which, uh, but that night, that might not have been the base, the idea for the game, but that's what I got while playing the game. So that was still fun. And like I said, I'm playing a lot of Horizon, so you guys definitely can check that out. And of course, if you guys want to uh, get in contact with me, definitely tell me below what you think of the games I'm playing and tell me what, um, what games you're playing. Of course, I always like to know what other people are playing and it gives me idea to what to record and what to play and what to talk to you guys about. To know, because I'm recording a podcast alone is a bit awkward at times, because yeah, I'm talking on my own, and I, I can't have that many pauses in between and all that. 
And uh, yeah, so we'll move on right now to what's in the news this week. So let's go. All right. So the first article of news, we're going to start off with the sadder one. Uh, well, yeah, sad is uh, if you guys are if you guys listen to podcasts, you definitely listen to uh, a lot of video game podcasts, I would assume. So you listen to uh, kind of funny guys. And of course, if you if you following this, unfortunately, sad to report that Colin Moriarty, one of the co-founders of uh, kind of funny has left kind of funny due to um, sort of uh, different uh, different visions for what kind of funny could be. And he decided to take his stuff on his own and do it on his own. I can, and here's the, uh, he, he did a post on Facebook, uh, and here it is. I will read it in full just for you guys to understand. So it's with heavy heart and great sadness that I announced my resignation from kind of funny effective immediately, which on, which is on Monday. Uh, this morning, the guys and I have constructed, uh, had a constructive conversation and feel that with our separate visions for the future and for the direction of the company, it's time to go our separate ways. I want to be clear that this is, this was my decision. This was my decision, sorry. Sometimes I don't look ahead. Uh, just as we collaborate as friends, so do we part. I hope you continue to support them. I simply want to reconnect with that's most important to me. Politics, history, philosophy, reading books. Talking about things I feel are most impactful and essential for a person like me. So I'll let, you guys can go on the Collins uh, Facebook page and check that out for you guys. Uh, there's about two or three other paragraphs there you guys can check out. Uh, yeah, it's a bit sad news, and uh, I've listened today. I've listened to the uh, morning show, which you guys can get on pa- podcast form, and they went through it. They talked about it pretty much the entire show, which is uh, which uh, got it, it made it easier to understand what was going on. Uh, hopefully, they got uh, they seem pretty truth truthful about it. Sorry if I said that that word wrong, but yeah, a lot of people were criticizing us it's over. Uh, unfortunately, Colin made a not unfortunately, but made made a last week he made a sexist joke, but that wasn't why he's leaving. Kind of funny. It's just uh, I guess it sort of happened all at the same time, like they were explaining on the morning show. And uh, I won't get into the sexual jokes. Uh, for me personally, I found the joke was all right. I've seen them make worse jokes than that and never got in trouble. And I just found it funny how people reacted to that joke. It wasn't even, it was it was like five words and people got offended on on Women's Day. And anyway, it was kind of weird, but people got offended. And But this has nothing to do with it. I, I don't know why, even why why I connected it to that. A lot of media people, for some reason, are connected, connecting it to that. And of course, rumors spread and all that. Even if I go on the Facebook page I'm right now, Colin is like, uh, the first, he already posted another thing. Like, I just want to let you all know that I've seen and continue to see the ridiculous outpouring of support you've been shooting towards me. Thousand of uh, blah, 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 receives. And then, then, of course, he goes, I think he's... Uh, yeah, he, he goes into explaining what's going on and all that because he, of course, there's a lot of stuff going on at once. I uh, can't wait to see what he's going to do next. Of course, he's, he's a very intelligent person. I like listening, to, like when he was on the Greg, uh, Game Over Greggy show. It's all, when he starts talking about politics, you can hear that he knows what he's talking about. And it's super fun to listen to him and very more insightful than what's going on in American politics compared to what the news generally tells you. And he's, he, sh- he, he shoots it as is and doesn't give a shit if he in- insults people on the way. And that's what I like about him. So hopefully we'll see him, uh, give his, uh, very good opinion, very well thought out opinion, uh, soon enough on a, maybe a politics, sh- politics show or stuff like that, which is going to be great to see. So, uh, good luck to the guys that kind of funny and of course call him already. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen there. So the next thing we're going to talk about on the news, uh, I don't have any particular order, so it's not from the most important to least important here. Uh, the next one I got on my list is uh, Play Collective, six new game launching with PS Plus discount. So PlayStation Today uh, announced a new uh, collective. So here's the news from the PlayStation blog itself. So hi everyone, I'm, this is from Bri- Brian Fujimoto. Uh, manager of digital game business for SIEA, uh, so Sony Interactive Entertainment Asia. So he says, Hi everyone, I'm happy to introduce the Play to Collective, our new name for special game promotions at PlayStation Store. Play Collective will encompass different sales and campaigns for digital games, and it first starts on March 21st with everything. Uh, now everything is the f- name of the first game. <laughs> and these, so basically the, this uh, sale uh, with discounts, is introducing six new game, which are launching separately, of course. So the first game is everything on uh, March twenty first. I'll, I'll I'll post the the link to the article so you guys can check out the six games. 
I think the most, uh, so the, yeah, sorry, I'll, um, I'm trying to skip ahead and I don't want to do that. Uh, first game on March 21st is everything. After that is Rain World on the 28th. And of course, probably the one that most awaited on the list, I would say, is Parappa the Rapper and Green Master coming out, uh, on, uh, April 4th. So you get a new release date for that. Uh, you're getting also Cosmic Star for, um, April 11th. Uh, Full Throttle Remastered. I think this is, this is by, is it the guy from, uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, so that's April 18th, Full Throttle Remastered. I think, uh, I'm, I think this is a remastered by Tim Schafer right now. Uh, I think so. I'm not sure. Don't don't quote me on that. And I think the last one on the list is What Remains of Eden Finch. Now, this is a game that's been running around a lot. Uh, so this, if I remember, if you guys ever heard of it, the, the, um, the, the screenshot for it looks actually looks pretty interesting. So... Uh, so the, the synopsis for the game is what remains of Edith Finch is a collection of strange tales about a family in Washington state as Edith, you'll explore the colossal Finch house searching for stories as she explores her family history and tries to figure out why she's the last one of her, in her family left alive. Each story is you find lets you experience the life of a new family member of the day they, their death with stories ranging from the distant past to the present day. So that looks, uh, this, this game that caught my eye too, like more than I would say per rapper rapper, cause I played the, the, the demo of that. Definitely go check that out on youtube.com for slash me time gamer. Of course, sorry, shameless, shameless plug. And, um, definitely go check out also for what remains of Edith Finch. Like I said, it's a game that's been announced for PS4 for a while now. It seems like almost two E3s ago, it seemed they were talking about it. And, uh, yeah, so this is a new thing they're introducing. They just basically changed the name of their, uh, special promotion to uh, play collective and hopefully we'll see what comes good and good from that in the future so the next little piece of news we got which is actually pretty su- well not surprising but uh, um it makes me a bit sad that i, I uh, exchanged that game away a while back and it's no man's sky no no man's sky is introducing their pathfinder update so if you're not following any no man's sky uh, i completely understand why you weren't probably following but in December, they released the Foundation Pack, which introduced base building, which was one of feature they promised probably at lunch on launch, and probably weren't able to do. But they they got they got around to it, which got a pretty high praise, I would have to say, from what I've heard. And now they're introducing the Pathfinder update, and on their on No Man's Sky's uh, website, uh, the uh, summary of what you can expect is improved visual, owning multiple ship, which is always nice. Base sharing online, base can be shared via Steam Workshop. New vehicle, the Exocraft. Uh, that's probably the biggest part of it. Uh, permadeath mode, build vehicle, racetrack, ship sp- uh, specialization and classes, shop trader, double the base building variety, multi tool specialization and classes, new weapon modes, photo mode, discovery menu, qual- quality of life, life improvement, 50% more original music from 65 days of static. And that's a lot. So the, I think the main part uh, of the Pathfinder update would be the Exocraft, and what they, when they, what they explain a bit here is Pathfinder heralds a new era of planetary exploration in No Man's Sky. New vehicles called Exocraft enable explorers to travel at great speed across their home planets, and allow navigation of even the most in- inhospitable terrains. There are three Exocraft to unlock and collect through base building, each of which can be further improved with powerful weaponry, mining equipment, and long-range scanners to maximize the effectiveness. So that's pretty cool. I have to say, like looking at the trailers, there's a trailer that I might be showing at the same time right now. If you're looking at the video format of it, uh, it's, the vehicles look actually pretty cool. I th- there's, I think there's multiple lands, land and watercraft. So that's pretty awesome. I would have to say. Definitely, I uh, feel a bit bad now that I actually brought the game back when I uh, when I. I didn't really complete it, but I, I got to a point where I was like, okay, I need to move on to another game because this isn't, doesn't seem to be advancing to nothing. And the game's pretty fun, though. That's one thing that I, I it sucks about No Man's Sky is the game, the fundamentals were there to be fun. It's just there wasn't, it seems like if the game would, they would have said like this is an early release of the game, an early access release of the game, it probably wouldn't have a lot, uh, probably wouldn't have got a lot of the flank. Uh, it, it had, it still has its, uh, good rating of seven, seven out of ten on Metacritics, which is pretty good, but on Steam it has a five out of ten, because when Steam, Steam gets their hand on something, if they don't like it, they'll fucking crash it to the ground if they need to. 
But anyway, any case, uh, No Man's Sky is definitely a game, I would say, with the two new... This is also free content, so you don't have to pay for it. It's part of the game. So I, I would definitely say if you if you haven't tried No Man's Sky, now is probably the best time, because you can probably find it on special. I, I don't even think PlayStation has it on special right now, so you guys can check that out. And yeah, so the two updates probably make this game very cool. Like, there's different modes now. There's uh, the normal... Expo- I think it's exploration or just survival... And now you have permadeath, so once you die, you, you, you have to restart over, and then you have the creative, which is the, this, I think, adds the pat, pat, the exo, uh, exocraft goes more with the, the, the creative part of it, where that's where the base building is and all that. So that's it for No Man's Sky. Hopefully you guys, you guys can give it a chance. That was a fun game I like to play, but I had to move on. I wanted to buy another game. So uh, that was, that, that one didn't make the cut, unfortunately. Now onto our last piece of news. Uh, if, Last week, I forgot to mention on the last podcast that they announced uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War, which is uh, the uh, the sequel to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, uh, which is an awesome game. If you guys can get your hand on that, I think it should be around like $10, $15 if you can probably get a copy of that. I think they even remastered it for the Pro, the PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, so definitely go check that out. So Shadow of War, basically, it's the same concept. I think you played the same guy, uh, Talon, or I think it was. Uh, I finished the game, I just, it's been so long. And uh, yeah, you play as, as Talon, if I remember, and they just take the Nemesis system to a whole nother level. So if I watched a lot of the, I, there's a gameplay trailer, which hopefully I'm playing right now so you guys can see. And basically it shows, uh, it, sh- it basically shows you the game, pl- uh, uh, most of the, the general gameplay, which is, uh, basically four takeovers, I, I would say, and it works on the Nemesis system. So the Nemesis system was introduced in uh, Mordor, and this expands on it a million times. So basically, each each uh, fort has their own overlords with their with their lieutenants and blah 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 all under that. Which also you have an army you can you work with to get to uh, take over the forts. And of course, like the other game, you can convert some of uh, some of the higher ups. And this time around, what's cool? If uh, uh, I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to show that in the in the video format, but there's also a part where when you're flying the Overlord, which is the last boss of a fort, uh, uh, if you're in trouble, you can I think you can summon or either he uh, dy- dynamically uh, comes on his own. One of your like under lieutenants, the, the one guy under you, comes up and helps you. Uh, fight the evil, the, the, the overlord, like, out of nowhere to help you relieve, cause you're, you're fighting him against, uh, and a couple of his minions on your own. And so it's fun that it actually has an interactive format where your guys are helping you. And apparently also, um, once you take over a fort, uh, depending on what guy you, uh, you put in there, cause you, uh, once you take over a fort, you choose one of your, lieutenants or i keep telling you lieutenants because i'm assuming that's like the under ranking the closest to the you being the leader uh that you put in become the new overlord of that base but under your control and depending on who what guy you put on the base itself what it because each character has a specific characteristic about him like uh i don't remember exactly uh definitely go check out the video I, I haven't i watched it last week so i don't remember everything about it but like it will impact how the how the fort looks, how the environment looks, uh, if it's more of a, uh, some of them are going to be more, ah, fuck, I don't remember every, all the information, but it's definitely there, it, it, it really changes the landscape of the fort itself, and how it's controlled, and how you, uh, it's, if, if, if you definitely check up the Nemesis system in Mordor, if you haven't, cause it's, it's something to, it's hard to explain, uh, the way it does, but it, each character has their own characteristic, their own weaknesses and and uh, and uh, strengths, and this comes over from that game and makes it even uh, uh, even better. So I can't wait what the guys in Monolith do and Warner Brothers. Can't wait to see what this game's gonna be. I'm hopefully I'm gonna be able to buy that because uh, there's a lot of game coming out right now. There's so many fucking games coming out. Like Andromeda comes out this week or next next week, I think. And then you have a couple more games. You have, like, even in, in, in October, the fucking, you're gonna have, uh, Red Dead coming out. You're gonna have so many other games coming out. And yeah, so we're gonna be moving on to what I like to call kickstarting it. I'm Mr. Meeseeks! Look at me! So if you guys don't know what kickstarting it is, it's basically a feature where I go onto Kickstarter or Indiegogo and I, I, I scroll down through the, all the games that are in there and I try to find a game 
to present to you guys that you might like as much as I like looking at the trailer. Now, I don't have much to go on. Usually, I just have a trailer and a couple of pictures and some description. But I, I hopefully, that's enough for you guys to go at least check it out and maybe toss a couple bucks to the game. So, the first game, the, the game this week I want to show you. And I was, if you're watching the video format, of course, at youtube.com for slash me time gamer, you'll see the video, you'll see the trailer being presented right now. It's called Lost Region. So, Lost Region, if we go to the uh, description of the game and where is it where is it where is it give me a second here okay the game um so a third person open world survival action sandbox with combat looting crafting building leveling and diplomacy this will take you to the world after civilization crisis join a group of people and create your own faction build your base or capture it from your enemies create your own world where you can be proud loner or create a group with your friends, the entire sub subsequent history of the world depends on you. So this, uh, the summary is this game. They're uh, hoping, they're they're planning to release this on PC, Xbox One, PS4, Max, Max, and Linux, and they're hoping for Q2 for PC, which I think they're pretty close. I think there's Steam, Steam. They were saying in May, and their Alpha is in March. So this month they should be releasing their Alpha pack, which act actually can get for ten dollars. Uh, US dollars, yeah, their alpha access, which is pretty cool. I have to say, the game looks extremely stunning. If you've played, if you played like Russ, Daisy, H1Z1, um, what else? Uh, Arma, th Arma 3, th this game looks a lot like this. Uh, some other, uh, this overview, it says, uh, Lost Region is a third person survival action game, I already said that, with multi, with multi, multi and single player elements, up to 100 players per session, which is pretty fucking cool. 100 people at the same time, you get to interact and like, uh, make factions or, uh, do like most other games do and you kill everybody on site to get the, all their loot. Uh, so the, it says also uh, over 64 square kilometers open world, co-op missions up to four players, clan system with diplomacy. Now that's cool because a lot of the other games don't have clan, a clan system where you can uh, group up with people. Some do, like Arma does. But I mean, like Daisy, I don't remember Daisy having like you can uh, tag somebody as a clan member and then at least you'll get, you you'll you'll be in the same clan tagged together. So this game is on Indiegogo, so definitely go check that out. Of course, I'll put the link in the, in the description below. It's called Lost Region. So the game so far is developed. Well, the game is developed by Farum Studio. Some of the guys, these guys are out of Odessa, Ukraine, uh, and uh, they're going for twenty thousand uh, dollars. And they have eight days left, so this is going to be a hard stretch. They already have a. Uh, Thir a little bit more than thirteen hundred dollars collected by seventy backers, so that's about only seventy percent, seven percent of their, of their uh, required uh, funding. But definitely go check that out. So, uh, check that out. I would definitely, uh, I would definitely support this game, uh, and uh, as, as you do, as you should too. And that's going to be it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this podcast. Holy smokes. This one went by quick. I think I'm up, yeah, up to 25, 23 minutes right now. So that's pretty good. I'm going to call it for now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the podcast. It was a quick one, uh, quick information. Of course, if you guys want me, if you want me to, uh, if you got any questions, con comment, concern, or you want, you have a question you want me to ask on the podcast so I can answer it on the podcast for you guys, definitely shoot that out at podcast at metimegamer.com. Would be glad to check out your emails and answer your questions anytime you have some. Also, if you have any other questions or uh, you want you want to place an ad on the on the podcast, also you can contact me at contact at metimegamer.com. Definitely check that every day for you guys. And then I think that's going to be it, guys. So thank you so much, guys, for listening and watching. I really appreciate it. Follow me everywhere. I'll, oh, also, I forgot. Of course, I always forget this. Uh, definitely, if you want to help out the podcast or the content I create all the time, you can definitely do that at patreon.com forward slash me time gamer, uh, where you can become a backer. There's only one tier right now. I offer you, uh, if I can, uh, early access to some of the videos and uh, stuff like that. All depends what's going on there once I figure that out. Uh, it's not it's not very developed right now, but if if you want to support, it's available to you guys to go do that. And uh, 
I think I'm gonna leave it there. So thank you so much, guys, for listening or watching. I really appreciate you guys listening. This it's fun to do, just talking to you guys naturally without any pressure of being scripted as today's news. I'm Bernard Shaw, but I'm I'm not. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you, thank you once again for watching or listening, and I will see you in the next video or podcast in your ears. And thank you so much. So keep on keeping on.